Hi fairies! Today we will create a doll inspired by a specific type of mantis, the orchid mantis. We aim for a balanced mix of a woman and a mantis. I'd like to give her four eyes, four legs, and maybe even wings. From the back of her head, tendrils, flowers would grow. Initially, I wanted to replicate the orchid, but as I consider it further, I'm thinking of random tendrils like peonies or something similar. Overall, I've been confused from the beginning of this project because I'm not sure about anything. I don't know if the head is a good idea, and I'm uncertain if I can handle so many limbs. And lastly, I doubt the pose. The doll was supposed to sit, but I'm not sure if the wings and the rear end won't interfere. So I'm truly undecided about the whole project, especially after the previous Wisteria project, which was thoroughly planned. But I decided to start and see what happens. In the end, it won't be the first doll I've designed on the go. Of course, I printed some study materials. Besides Google, I also used Pinterest, which confused me even more in the concept, so I turned it off, and I'm laughing. D for this doll, I chose two types, Junifer and Spectra. From Junifer, I'll use only the head because the whole concept seems a bit creepy, and I wanted to use soft and gentle facial features that this doll has. With the second doll, which is a damaged child, we'll use only the body. It has a damaged leg, which doesn't matter because we would remove them anyway. Of course, we'll remove the hair and immerse the head in a warm bath to remove the glue from inside. This is all we'll need, and even so, I'll cut it all up. Again, I'm laughing. I start slowly removing the hair, scraping the glue from the inside with a screwdriver. Since the head was in a warm bath, it's easier, but it's probably the worst process because the glue is sticky, nasty, and it's hard. Most doll artists cut the head, but it messes up the enlargement of the acetone bath. The head enlarges in acetone, and when it dries and is already cut, it doesn't shrink evenly. So, unless it's absolutely necessary, I don't cut the heat, and if I have to, only when it's after the bath and has dried for two or three days. Of course, I clean the heat so as not to damage the acetone.
the arms with a gentle extension, connecting the wire to the model and bonding it with hot glue. This way we'll create a strong enough structure so we can complete the rest. Before completing the entire structure, let's create an opening for the rear end. I already have a drill prepared, so let's go for it. I'll try to make a wire structure for the rear end. We'll attach the finished structure with hot glue. This is the head shortly after being removed from the bath. I also took a classic head for comparison to see how much it swelled. Now we can let it dry for two to three days. After making the rough construction, I can start filling the thicker parts with hot glue to save on epoxy sculpt, which is incomparably more expensive than hot glue. Now we can see the head after two days. It's not completely smaller yet, but it's shrinking, especially the back part. It will continue to shrink a bit as the acetone dries, so in the end, the head will be a bit smaller than a normal model. Now we can prepare the wire structure for the head, specifically the antennae and the second pair of eyes. We heat a piece of wire with a lighter and then fix it with hot glue. I forgot to draw it. we won't use ears. I'll remove them in case of another doll because when I was working on Ariel's ears, this would have helped. D, like the antennae, I'll make eyes. We try to fill in the empty spaces with hot glue as much as possible so we can reinforce them, wrap them with aluminum foil, and then with epoxy sculpt. The entire process needs to be done in stages because each part needs to dry before I move on to the next one. So I'll make the eyes and let them dry. I've applied the base material and now I can shape and create details. It somewhat reminded me of others and I had a good laugh, hoping it won't look like that when finished. Today, I finally received a wooden stand from my father-in-law. It's absolutely amazing, both the stand and the father-in-law. 
First, I'll mark with a pencil where I want to create holes on the stand to hold the doll. I conducted a poll on Instagram about the pose and the standing one won. So, it will be standing, hmm, more or less. I'll fix the pose with super glue so that I can start modeling. I'll let it dry well. It's 11 p.m. I managed to drink three glasses of wine while waiting for it to dry, but I still need to model to let the main parts harden and tomorrow I can continue. So I'm going to work on the torso, neck and joints to be able to work on the complicated parts tomorrow. After the main parts have hardened, we can refine the rest, like thighs, legs, arms, and the rear end. Then we'll smooth them and let them dry. Before completing the final parts of the legs and arms, we must let everything harden again to avoid ruining the work. Let's start sanding the doll. We'll smooth out the edges at the joints. Then, I'll paint the doll with watercolor to see where I haven't sanded it properly. Now we see where the bumps are, so we'll use a thinner attachment and sand those areas again. To finish, we'll use sandpaper. I've created individual thorns, and I'm going to apply them to the doll with super glue. I'll use epoxy clay to finish the last leg joints. I've stacked small balls on a wire that I'll refine later. To temporarily model the details, I'll reinforce the thorns with UV resin.
dry pastels, such as the face and belly. I'll use Mr. Super Clear as a base coat for pastels and watercolor pencils on the exposed parts. This will create a matte surface for better adhesion. Covered areas will remain glossy. We'll start by outlining facial details using watercolor pencils. Then, I'll apply dry pastels to shade the details around the eyes and create a blush. I'll follow the same process for the body. For the eyes, I've decided to create a texture using epoxy. I'll apply small drops with a needle to create insect-like eyes. This part was relatively simple, as I later realized that the colors deviated from the original concept, which intended a transition from white through orange to pink endings. So, I decided to break up the pink color with green. I'm adding final details to the doll, such as freckles and ornaments, using acrylic paints. Lastly, I'll complete all the remaining details, including wings, stand, and more. Thank you for your attention and enjoy the showcase.